Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcelo Cajillas from Patricia PLC. We are a listed company in, in the German Stock Exchange. We have um, almost 15 billion assets under management and almost 1 billion um, assets under management invested in the Nordics. I would like to give you a, a quick overview about the macroeconomic developments in the, Euro, in the Eurozone in Europe and also in the Nordics, as well as a, a quick, quick description of the real estate markets in the Nordics from uh, a foreign international um, point of view. The current situation in, in Europe is quite diverging between the, between the countries. We have on the one hand a high divergence between, uh, between countries in terms of labor market. Also the fiscal, fiscal position of countries is very de deteriorated as a consequence of the last two financial crises and debt crises. So we have at the moment um, high um, countries that are highly that present high debt levels as well as a negative <laughs> fiscal deficit, and um, in case of the Nordics, we see a very really stable uh, macroeconomic environment that will allow in future the countries to increase the, um, the, the the investment projects and to generate impulses for the economy in terms of fiscal investments. And looking at the euro at, at Europe from a broader perspective, we see that the Nordic countries, excluding Norway, are fulfilling the mastery criteria of a government debt level below 60% on the one hand, and on the other hand, a budget deficit below 2% of the GDP. So this will allow countries in future, in future to invest in the country, to increase production levels, and to generate a stable macroeconomic um, base. And the all uh, looking at the forecast for the coming years, we see overall in Europe, uh, we see that by the end of 2014, almost all countries in Europe, excluding Italy, presented at, at economic expansion. And this economic expansion is also transmitted into the, into the Nordics, um, for which reason in future we expect, following the, the European Commission, a growth in GDP in all countries. Um, more in Norway and Sweden and quite less in in Denmark and Finland, but as, um, as a main uh, consequence of the decisions of the central bank to buy uh, government bonds and to, uh, because of the decision of the Swedish uh, central bank to, in to cut the main refinancing rate, we expect that, that the growth in future will be mainly driven by domestic demand and also low interest rates. And at the same time, we are now looking that the countries or that the Nordics will not fall into deflation, which is very important for household and also for companies, as in a, in a scenario with deflation, households would postpone investments uh, in the expectation that prices will fall. So this scenario is not uh, or will not take place in the Nordics, for which reason I think investments are quite safe. But the growing prospects in the Nordics um, the growing prospect in the Nordics um, are, constra are constrained by the ongoing urbanization across the Nordics. We have two limiting factors. The first one is the urbanization, and the second is the concentration of economic welfare. We saw that the urbanization trends in the Nordics over the last 10 years led to a concentration of population across few regions and also to a shrinkage uh, of the population in the northern areas. So we are now, um, oh, this is the result mainly of two factors. First, the, the positive immigration rate of mainly um, working persons into the Nordic markets, and on the other hand, the positive fertility rates. So we have in the, in the Nordics the highest fertility rates in a European comparison, and all these factors will lead in future to a population growth uh, higher than 10%. But if we look at the regional um, concentration or the regional distribution of growth, we may, or we may look only at the hotspots, uh, only at the urban centers and urban conurbations. But um, one of the consequences of urbanization is the concentration of welfare. We see that the purchasing power in the regions with a positive population growth is increasing, and on the other hand, regions without 
um, a population or, or a demographic demand are losing their economic production. So if we look at investments, regional knowledge, and especially for, re for, for residential or for real estate investments, we see that the demand and the prices are increasing only in regions with a positive outlook <coughs> due to the last 10 years. And also given the forecast, the population forecast for the next 10 years. And this is why, in our opinion, regional knowledge and also getting a contact into the market is very important when investing in real estate. As we may have here um, four different countries with four different currencies, with four different languages and four different market cycles. And if we look at the market cycles in the Nordics, we see that 2014 was a historic year for the real estate markets in the Nordics. We saw an increase in the investment volume of about 60%, leading to overall um, investment volume of 28% in comparison to 2013. And this is uh, the highest level or the highest point since 2007. And this is mainly driven by the domestic, by domestic investors uh, within the markets, and only 20% um, is driven by foreign investors. So the demand is concentrating on the one hand on the hotspots on the main regions and also dominated by local by local market play players. And almost 50% um, of the transactions were done in the last quarter. So we see a fall in the oil prices, low interest rates, a fall in the euro, in the euro in, in comparison to the main trade, trading partners. And all these factors are increasing the, the attractiveness of the Nordics from a national and from an international perspective. And looking at the office markets in the Nordics, um, we see a strong demand, a strong concentration, and a strong focusing on grade A properties or prime uh, properties into the office markets. If we look at the, at the range of the 25 main office markets in Europe, we see that the Nordics, that the prime yields of office for offices, for office properties, are increasing steadily since 2008. So we are below the average, the European average, on the one hand, and we are in, and we present, we see levels prior to the financial crisis. So we are now reaching a new, in my opinion, cycle in which the demand for offices or for properties is really increasing. And this is, uh, on the one hand, opening um, new investment opportunities, but on the other hand, we have now really, uh, uh, really good investment opportunities in secondary locations at the moment. And, <clears throat> and when looking at the development of retail properties, I think uh, retail properties are quite different when, when investing in the Nordics because we have a, a regional coverage, uh, which is, they are very, very, very big countries, and retail properties are mainly located in the, in the, in the hotspots. So we have in the Nordics the highest internet coverage by households, so e-commerce, and shopping centers are quite different when investing in the um, when investing in the Nordics. The highest the highest internet coverage by households is a channel or opportunity to trade uh, to trade with customers. But on the other hand, we have to invest, or we or we should look at high streets from a different point of view. And the current um, and just to give it an outlook, um, I think the current situation in the Nordics. Um, is really, um, it's really good, it's really stable. We see that, um, that the oil prices are, at the moment, no, uh, they are not a problem because, um, um, because we have a low interest uh, rate scenario and the macroeconomic conditions in these countries are really stable in comparison to other, to other countries. So I would try to, um, to summarize all the facts that I, that I've presented, and if you like to uh, download the, the the key takeaways, it will be quite good. And for all the present for the pre presentation, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you.